Hi everyone, this is the first out of a three-part mini-series on blockchain and trade finance during COVID-19, brought to you by Singapore Computer Society's Blockchain Special Interest Group. First up, we have Alan, who is the Program Director at IBM's Blockchain Lab. He will provide his perspective on the situation, as well as insights on how IBM is leveraging on blockchain technology to help combat COVID. So I'm going to tackle a few areas. One is the observations that um, we see in a uh, post-COVID-19 um, world. The second I'm going to talk about is some of the solutions that um, we are working off that leverages blockchain as a, as a core enabler, uh, core enabling technology. And finally, I'm just going to talk about broad trends that uh, we see as a result of this uh, uh, COVID-19 um, pandemic and what are some of the areas that we can potentially take on as individuals, as corporates, and, and as members of society, right? So let me just touch upon the first item. So the broad observations that we see um, with the COVID-19 um, pandemic is really um, the impact that it has on people, um, professionals, and lives in general. People are you know, staying away from each other, businesses are changing the way they, they behave, they respond, and, and really people are finding ways of working and coming online in a much faster pace than we would have been uh, in, you know, prior to this pandemic. And increasingly, they're looking at finding new platform for them to conduct their businesses, uh, the transactions in a way that's efficient, that's trusted in a more secure manner. Um, the other aspect that I see as an observation is just the impact on the supply chain. And this comes in various flavors. One is, you know, the the buyers and the sellers, right? The, the, what's happening in the industry today? We have uh, medical uh, professionals, hospitals um, that are looking at how they can go about sourcing for new supplies. Uh, you know, whether it's ventilators, whether it's masks. And in a lot of these cases, what we see on the other side, on the supply side, um, are really existing businesses who has previously not been in the uh, medical or the healthcare industry, changing the way um, their supply chain works, you know, refurbishing, refitting the supply chain to supply, um, you know, things like, masks, gowns, and really other supplies to be able to support the growing and uh, need of the healthcare industry in order to combat um, this uh, pandemic. So with that, I think a few things uh, have evolved. One is the need to for um, the uh, procurement officer to quickly onboard some of these new uh, suppliers that have come on board the system. And they need to be able to do that in a way that uh, it's expedient uh, because you don't want to spend a lot of time um, onboarding new suppliers. But at the same time, you need to be uh, uh, able to do that in a responsible way. So you need a way to be able to vet through some of these new suppliers uh, in a very effective and efficient manner. The other aspect on the supply chain side is just visibility of existing supplies. So the last thing that you want is really to be hoarding uh, supplies uh, and, and having the visibility of you know inventory that you have and also on the supplier side allows um, hospitals to have a visibility on uh, existing supplies and to be able to redirect um, supplies uh, when they need it most and this is something that uh, uh, we see uh, globally right um, the other aspect um, other than you know just the impact on people processes uh, the supply chain. I think one of the one of the things that we do see, uh, or I see, is just the unprecedented uh, unprecedented collaboration that exists. You have people, companies, really coming together um, to share data, share information in you know in a way that is uh, really encouraging. Um, what we see as well is um, people coming together to collaborate, not just in terms of sharing information, but to be able to draw insights and to be able to share those insights that have garnered analysis that's performed back into the community. But 
in the midst of all this, I guess the question that we need to consider, and a lot of people are, are wondering as well, is the veracity of the information that is uh, presented. Can I really trust the source of the data, uh, or you know, the data that this, that um, is presented today comes from various sources? As we are looking at aggregating it, combining it, integrating some of these data, um, how do we do this in a consistent manner? Right, we have various sources of information from the CDC, from the World Health Organization, for example. How do we uh, communicate those information? And as we look at partnerships across uh, different organizations, um, increasingly uh, there are private and public partnerships that are being observed, insights that are being performed. How do we still maintain uh, and, and, and guarantee or provide some level of assurance to people that are consuming the data that it's um, they're still looking at trusted and verified data? So it's really about what people, yeah, they are impacted, the processes, as well as the data, we're seeing unprecedented collaboration. So with that as a context, um, the second question that I would like to kind of touch upon is just some of the initiatives that IBM is working to tackle some of these areas. Um, so one of these example is really around the Rapid Supplier Connect, which is a initiative that we have undertaken um, alongside you know, various other companies and parties to connect uh, the, the buyers on one side uh, as well as the suppliers. So really providing um, a, a platform that supports emergency supply onboarding and inventory availability. So it acts as a single source of truth um, combined with a marketplace to help non-traditional suppliers um, uh, to support the procurement officers and also to be able to present the availability of inventory. And this is done through essentially what we would term as a digital passport uh, of the supply information that can be shared very easily with um, the various uh, parties in the uh, value chain and to allow the suppliers to be able to list the medical equipment, the availability of inventory on this platform itself. So it's leveraging technologies that we have around our, uh, from an IBM perspective, the IBM Sterling suite of products around supply chain business network, and also um, tapping into trust your supplier uh, network that uh, we've been involved with together with um, Chainyard, who has built out the solution around that. The other initiative um, that comes to mind as we are looking at addressing um, the COVID-19 um, issue with blockchain is really around um, has, uh, this initiative called Mipasa. Mipasa is a uh, open platform for uh, sharing uh, coronavirus data um, that has been uh, attested uh, by various parties. It's built on top of Hyperledger Fabric, it's a core technology, and um, it really provides uh, the validation of disparate data sources um, to reconcile, re re reconciling uh, data from various dis disparate sources like the World Health Organization, CDC figures, as well as verifying um, data that's come in through public sources as well. So having a way to um, provide the, uh, or, or allow a platform to share data that's been verified by various party and to be able to prove the provenance of where the data actually comes from um, and the insights, once the data has been extracted out, uh, allow that as a platform to pump it back to um, the, uh, the platform. And really what we try to do with this initiative is really to with the goal of helping technologists, data scientists, uh, public health officials, if you would, um, to be able to respond and devise solutions that um, hopefully allows uh, you know, the community to be able to subdue the, uh, the pandemic and to support any recovery efforts as well. So, uh, so that's something that um, we're looking at as well. Um, so we touched upon the observations, we touched upon the initiatives. Um, just what are the broader trends that we see with the COVID-19 um, pandemic? I think as we settle towards the new normal, um, what's clear is that the pace of digitization continues to accelerate and you know, the way we consume 
information, the way we transact, all that's going to change. And with this, I think what we're seeing is a new ecosystem of uh, business platforms uh, that have arise. And blockchain plays a key foundation for not just digital supply chain, um, having the visibility, the greater trust um, to um, you know, securing the transactions. But I think it's also about sharing information to whether it's the digital passport that we spoke about, sharing supply information, but also sharing data as we look to collaborate and exchange information, not just medical information, medical supplies, but I think uh, potentially extending that to um, just um, goods and services and really how it changed the way that um, we interact with one another and potentially businesses in general as well.